Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to the IPAC coding discussion with myself and Dr. William Donahue. Uh, thank you, Dr. Donahue. He is a retired anesthesiologist who is a certified coder, a certified anesthesia coder, and he's currently studying for his CPMA and has agreed to do this discussion with me, so I'm very grateful. Thank you, Dr. Donahue. Happy to be here. Dr. Donahue is going to do our technical discussion and I'll handle the coding and appeals parts and stuff, even though you're learning this, so you'll be able to do this part soon too, right? All right. Will you give us the technical explanation of an IPAC block? Certainly. Well, IPAC, as I'm sure you all understand, is the interspace between the pontilial artery and the posterior capsule of the knee. This illustration uh, is very informative of where the needle needs to be placed to obtain this block. You are not blocking one single nerve as you are doing in many, you're actually doing the very small sensory blocks of several nerves, the tibial, the perineal, and the posterior obturator nerve. The small centric branches all are located in this space. The needle is directed between the head of the femur and the, the medial condyle or the lateral condyle and in, um, in front or anterior to the puppeteal artery. And that is where uh, the anesthesia is deposited 20 to 30 uh, ML's most commonly used is bupivacaine. Thank you, Dr. Donahue. I am so grateful to you for covering the clinical aspect of this. So what I'd like to say is that uh, IPAC has been around for a little while, but when it was a new procedure, I did quite a bit of research on this, as did other certified coders and other educators, so we would know what to tell people about how you code this IPAC procedure. So one of the things that I like to point out is that because the information changes rapidly, sometimes your coding books do not have information in it for some of these new blocks. And typically when that happens, you will find that we as coders are sending you to a peripheral nerve or branch for other peripheral nerve or branch of 64450, I'll be showing that on the next slide, because usually if a procedure doesn't fall under the peripheral nerve, you have to resort to an unlisted code. Now, both myself, Devonna Slater with Auditing for Compliance and Education and Marvel Hammer, as you will see on the next couple of slides, all consider this an other peripheral nerve or branch. In fact, we kind of did notes back to each other back then to say, what do you think about this new code? Where do you think it falls? And we all pretty much agreed it fell, down, it fell under 64450 back in 2016, 2017 when these codes first came out. What I uh, like to say is that this is not just for IPAC, but for any procedures. If you have new procedures in your office and you are fortunate enough to work with a clinician uh, such as Dr. Donahue, then you can talk to them, you know, sit down with them and say, let's look at these and, and give me an idea of what you think the code might be or what an appropriate code might be to compare it to. If you're with a billing company, it's a little bit harder to sit down with the clinician. So uh, again, thank you, Dr. Donahue for doing that with us today. So I know you're still fairly new to the coding part of this. So back in 2016, and if the, those of you who are, were coding back in 2016, you were probably coding the IPAC blocks as 64450. And I wouldn't say that that was incorrect for that time period because of you know, the recommendations. I researched this. Uh, ACE, Auditing for Compliance and Education, researched this. I'm going to buzz forward real quick to show you. Marvel Hammer, who has since retired, but is a very reputable resource if you run across her. She also agreed that this would look, we would look under 64450 for that single injection code. However, 
Some things changed in 2020, which I will get to in just a minute. I wanna point out two other things on the slide. The first one is that ACE has updated their recommendations for this because we are gonna be pointing toward an unlisted code for IPAC. And then back in uh, when I was doing the education for this, Dr. Donahue, I put catheter for this and you said typically these are not performed with the catheter based on your research. So that would not even have applied, correct? That's correct. So thank you. That Again, that comes down to me looking things up on a computer and not really understanding the clinical aspect of it and then being able to talk to a clinician, which makes it a heck of a lot easier. All right, the other things that I want to point out here is that I underline plain here for a reason. We're going to get to that in the description of the code that is going to be a comparison code. All right, so according to both, uh, res my resources here are MEDAC, which is a large billing company, and then ABC for the next slide under anesthesia experts, but this is in coordination with uh, correspondence between the uh, billing company and the American Medical Association, which ultimately led to the CPT assistant also publishing something in June of 2020 to indicate that the IPAC block is directed at a tissue plane and not a specific nerve. So as Dr. Donahue explained about the procedure itself, it's in an area and not at a specific nerve. So we are all going to agree that 64999 is the unlisted procedure code for that. Um, and that's what is the recommendation from June of 2020 and forward. I'd also like to point out that if you are doing this procedure in conjunction with the femoral block, Dr. Donahue is going to explain why both of those procedures are actually medically necessary. So I'm going to turn it back over to you, Dr. Donahue. Certainly. Um, the uh, payers and CPT who are not allowing uh, this to be billed for both blocks simultaneously are not educated about the anatomy and the innervation of the knee. <clears throat> the femoral block is a profound block, it's used widely, and it pro provides profound anesthesia, but only to the anterior aspect of the knee. Hence, the posterior aspect will not be, an be anesthetized by the femoral nerve block, and it is absolutely imperative that the IPOC uh, is uh, performed in order to get the posterior aspect of the knee. And the patients are able to ambulate quicker. He is having the patient's recovery time greatly reduced as well. So after reviewing all of the information, particularly the CPT and the AMA recommendations, which are unarguable, the consensus is you will be reporting an unlisted code 64999 for the IPAC block. Just keep in mind that you cannot modify unlisted codes. And then I want to thank Ashley Taylor, who actually posted a question saying they were using the unlisted code, which is correct. So good, Ashley. But Medicare is usually denying that service. So she wants to know what they need to include to get this service paid. So the first thing that you want to do is one, understand that you cannot modify unlisted codes. So if you have any modifiers on there, get rid of those. The second is you want to be able to equate this procedure. So for this portion of it, I asked Dr. Donahue, what do you think would be an appropriate uh, procedure to equate this with so that the insurance company can say, how do I compare this? Now for uh, your knowledge purposes, 64486 is the transabdominal plane with the ultrasound guidance. And typically these IPAC blocks are going to be done under I, uh, ultrasound as Dr. Donahue explained, it's a little bit hard to get to that area without the ultrasound guidance. And the work value for 64486 is 1.27. So if you were reporting 64450, or if you are still reporting 64450, you're gonna to wanna to switch that over to 64999. You will have been slightly underbilling by 0.5 
from whatever time period. June 2020 is about when the AMA and CPT assistant information came out. But I know that not everybody gets that immediately, particularly if you don't have you know, the um, subscription to the CPT assistant. So you're gonna to wanna to look at your own practices to see, do I need to do anything about this? Just use caution if you're gonna go try back to June re-billing these as an unlisted code because you might run across a lot of insurance companies giving you um, problems with trying to rebuild those as unlisted. You wanna make sure that you make a packet. Um, and if you just like start doing this now and then go from forward, have a packet that has the 64999 uh, stuff all together. So you will have a list of this, the resources we're gonna give you that are on the next slide and I'll post them on the YouTube channel as well. Print some of that out, print out the, uh, listen again to the portion where Dr. Donahue explained about the anterior and posterior aspect of the knee to say why you have to do both parts of that procedure or sit with your clinical physician or CRNA or whoever loves talking or teaching in your practice and work on the appeal letter or the primary this goes with my packet letter. You also wanna make sure that you're including a procedure report that is separate and distinct from the anesthesia record itself because remember, when your anesthesiologist or your anesthesia provider is doing these post-operative pain block, post-operative pain services, it is separate and distinct from the anesthesia service that was given for the surgery itself. So hopefully that's on a separate documentation, like an operative report. And as I said, you, you include in the packet the code for comparison, all of your research, no modifiers, and hopefully that'll get your claim paid. So with that, Dr. Donahue, unless you have anything else you would like to add? Um, no, I think you've covered the subject very, very well. I think comparing it to the technique of the transabdominal plane uh, is very salient here. You're not anesthetizing a single nerve. You're depositing the anesthetic in a space that the nerves transverse. It's really the same uh, you know, same idea, the same method of obtaining the anesthesia. So a fair and a way to equal it to a different type. Uh, I of think it's a very fair comparison. And I am thankful for your clinical knowledge and grateful to you for sharing it with us because you are following my mantra, which is be kind to one another and generous with your knowledge. So thank you. Thank you for being generous with your knowledge. I hope that everyone was able to get some value and that uh, if you liked it, let us know. We are both willing to try to coordinate these for you again if you give us some topics. I have thoroughly enjoyed working with you, Dr. Donahue, and thank you for your time. Thank you all very much.